In this video, we are going to learn about Hamming code. So without wasting time, let's get started. So when we send our data, there is possibility that due to noise, our data got distorted. So in order to detect error in received message, we have various methods. And all these methods are like this. Out of all these methods, previously we have seen parity code. And in this video, we are going to learn Hamming code. And in upcoming videos, we'll learn other methods. So first we'll start with what is Hamming code. Hamming code is a method that can detect and correct the error when data is stored or transmitted. It requires some parity bit to be sent with the data in order to detect the error at receiving end. Hamming code is named after its inventor, Richard Weasley Hamming. He developed this method while working with the Bell Labs around 1950s. While understanding the definition of Hamming code, we have seen that there are two types of bits. One is data bit and the other is parity bit. So what is data bit and what is parity bit? The parity bit are the bit which is sent with the data in order to detect the errors. And the data bit is our actual data bit that we want to send. Now here you can see that few of parity bit needs to be added with the data to form a complete Hamming code. So what amount of bits needs to be added with the data to form Hamming code? So now let's explore that. The equation to find total length of Hamming code is 2 to the power p greater than or equal to p plus d plus 1. Here d is data bit and p is parity bit and that additional one is used to indicate no error but that we'll discuss later on. Now let's understand this equation. Let's say we want to send 11 bit data like this. So in this case d will be equal to 11. So in our entire Hamming code 11 bits will be used for data. Now we need to find what are the numbers of bit we need to send along with this data bit as parity bit to form a complete Hamming code. So now we'll find P. So what will be the actual value of P? The actual value of P is such that which satisfy this equation. So now we'll start assuming P is value one by one. So if we use P is equal to zero, then two raised to zero greater than or equal to zero plus 11 plus one. So one is greater than or equal to 12, which does not satisfy the equation. So now we'll need to change the value of P. Let's say we take value of P is equal to two. So when we use P is equal to two, the equation shows this and still it does not satisfy the equation. So now again, we'll change the value of P and this time we'll assume it as four. So when we assume P is equal to four, then 16 is greater than or equal to 16. Now this condition satisfy our equation. That means to send 11 bit of data, we are supposed to add 4 bit of parity bit and one additional bit total makes it 16 bit. That means that whenever we want to send 11 bit of data, Hamming code equivalent to that will be of 16 bit, which includes data bit and parity bit. So now I think the concept about the length of Hamming code is clear to everyone. If it is clear, then do write yes in comment section. And if you still have any doubt, then you can post your doubt in comments. Now we'll move ahead. Let's say here we have two data set. Both this data is of four bit. And using these two examples, we are going to understand the entire process of forming Hamming code and detecting error using the formed Hamming code. So now let's begin with the process. So here, this is our four bit data. So the step number one of generating Hamming code is to find the total length of Hamming code. And which equation we are going to use to find the length of Hamming code? The equation is this. So if we try different values of P, we'll get that three bit of parity code will be sufficient to send a four bit of data. So together it becomes seven bit of entire Hamming code. So here the length of code is seven bit and in this seven bit, four bit will be of data bit. So this is also known as seven four Hamming code. So now we'll write our blank seven bit Hamming code. 
using this equation we know that p is equal to 3 that means we supposed to place 3 parity bit in this code but now it's time to find where do we supposed to place the parity bit here 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 where so now it's time to find where to place parity bits so to find the location of parity bit this equation will be used 2 to the power of p so here we have seen that there will be three parity bits in this equation so we'll start p is equal to 0 1 and 2 so p is equal to 0 1 2 three values of p if we place these three values of p in this equation then we'll get 2 raised to 0 which is equal to 1 so this one is the p1 parity bit that means your first bit will become your p1 first parity bit then we use one in place of p so 2 raised to 1 gives us 2 so this will become your second parity bit so this 2 indicates the location of second parity bit so the second bit will be used as your p2 second parity bit and now we use this 2 in place of p so it gives us 2 raised to 2 that becomes 4 so this is your location number 4 fourth bit so this fourth bit will become your parity bit number 3 so these are the location of your parity bit p1 p2 and p3 so this is our data and we are going to denote this data with d1 d2 d3 and d4 name so now the question is how we are going to place our data in this blank spaces so the lsb will be placed over here and subsequently d2 d3 and d4 or the other way is you place your most significant bit at here the most significant bits location and then place the subsequent data so this is how you are going to form an entire hemming code so now let's place this data over here so we have placed the data and now it's time for the parity bits so this is our 7 bit code and now it's time to calculate the values of parity bit each parity bit checks specific combination of data bits here is the table for bit position of our code these are the bit positions and these are its binary related values now using this table we are going to identify that parity bit 1 will check which specific combination of bits so parity bit 1 will check all the position that has the least significant bit set to 1 let's say 1 3 5 and 7 these are that means the value of parity bit 1 will be decided on the values based on bit number 3 5 and 7 here we are not considering 1 because parity bit 1 itself is placed on bit number 1 the same way if we talk about parity bit 2 then parity bit 2 will check all the positions that have the second least significant bit set to 1 in their binary representation this is the second bit or second least significant bit over here position number 2 3 6 7 and here you can see 2 3 6 7 are set as 1 in their binary reflected values and the same way for parity bit 3 it will check all the position that have third least significant bit or the most significant bit in our case in this case this will be the most significant bit so parity bit 3 will check all the position that has most significant bit set as 1 and here you can see 4 5 6 7 so now here bit 1 2 and 4 are parity bit itself so in order to calculate the value of parity bit we'll use the remaining bits so to calculate the parity bit 1 the equation is p1 is equal to d1 xor d2 xor d4 p2 is equal to d1 xor d3 xor d4 p3 is equal to d2 xor d3 xor d4 now in our previous video we have seen the concept of odd parity and even parity and this is the equation for even parity that means in this entire calculation we are going to consider even parity not odd parity if you want to use odd parity then there has to be slight modification in this equation the equation for odd parity looks like this d1 xor d2 xor d4 bar d1 xor d3 xor d4 bar and d2 xor d3 xor d4 bar so you're supposed to add bars over here in order to convert it into odd parity currently we are using even parity so we'll remove it now if you want to clear your concept about odd and even parity then you can refer my previous video little later 
the link of that video will be in comments and here in i button so now it's time to calculate the parity bit so now here when we use even parity what will be the value of p1 for that we are going to consider position 3 5 and 7 so this is position 3 5 and 7 so 3 is 1 5 is 0 7 is 1 that means there are already even numbers of 1 in this data so our parity bit will become 0 so p1 will become 0 now for p2 we are going to use position 3 6 and 7 so here we have 3 6 and 7 here we have odd numbers of 1 so in order to make it even our p2 should be 1 so our entire data including parity bit will become even numbers of 1 and now we'll jump for the third one which is bit number 5 6 and 7 so 5 6 and 7 so here we have even numbers of 1 so our parity bit will become 0 so this will be 0 1 and 0 so from this we are going to form our entire hemming code so this is our entire hemming code for this 4 bit of data and that was the process how you can form the hemming code now this is another 4 bit data example i want you to pause the video now and to prepare hemming code for this data once the entire hemming code is ready write that thing in comments and i'll check whether you have calculated it correctly or not so now it's time to move ahead this was the code that we have previously constructed now we'll see what happens when we send this data at receiving end and if some bit got altered or some bit got corrupted so here you can see this bit is got corrupted so now we'll see how this hemming code will help in detecting the error and correcting the error here we'll perform the same parity check calculation that we have used to create parity bits but instead calling it p1 p2 p3 now we'll call it as c1 c2 c3 because it is checking bit so our c1 bit corresponds to 1 3 5 and 7 so as we are using even parity it will check bit number 1 3 5 and 7 so bit number 1 3 5 and 7 so it has even numbers of 1 so our c1 will become 0 now we'll go for c2 it will check bit number 2 3 6 and 7 so bit number 2 3 6 and 7 it has odd numbers of 1 so c2 will become 1 and now it's time for c3 it will look for the bit 4 5 6 and 7 so 4 5 6 and 7 it has odd numbers of 1 so c3 will also become 1 so our error checking code will become c3 c2 c1 1 1 0 we will use this table this is the same table that we have seen previously but previously it was p1 p2 p3 now it is c1 c2 c3 the rest of the things are same so now look into this table this code is related to position number 6 that means that there is some problem in bit number 6 so this is how the error is being detected and if you alter the magnitude of bit number 6 you can correct this error and when we receive this error as 0 0 0 this one that means there is no error in same video previously we have seen one equation 2 raised to p greater than or equal to p plus d plus 1 so that additional one was related to this no error bit we'll explore this logical explanation somewhere later in another video now this is example for you in this code here there is some error that means there is some error with itself a parity bit now you supposed to follow the same process of troubleshooting or error detecting in parity code that we have just learned previously so find out which error checking code you get and then write that code into the comment section so similar to this there are other interesting codes in this playlist if you want to learn that jump to this playlist so see you into the next video